Hi, welcome back to Life in the Family with Lynn and Carmen Burrell. That's us. We're glad to have you join us today. We started last week talking about honor. We've been talking about the, the one another's in scripture, and we talked about praying for one another, and last week we started with love one another, and we're going to continue that this week, um, continuing just to um, see what that means and how we can apply that. Um, and I wanted to just check with you, and you check with yourself Have you been walking in that this week after hearing that about honoring one another? What kinds of things did you do? We didn't give an assignment or anything, but have you noticed ways that you could honor, ways that you did honor, opportunities that you missed maybe, or ways that you can adjust and say, you know what, I had an opportunity to honor, but then I didn't. But this week, I am going to take those opportunities and honor, so honor and see people the way that God sees them and love them that way. So, welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> so, Carmen, let's define uh, the word honor and respect. Um, even reverence is another term that has been used for, for honor. Let's just talk a, about the definition a little bit. So. When you think of the the term honor, the word honor, the concept, truth concept, what does that mean to you? Hmm. Um, Part of honor is very related to value for me. Um, To honor something is to to prefer it, to um, express in different ways the great value that you feel for it, that you know it has. Um, Like if I had a a person I wanted to honor that, you know, even outside of everyday people, if I had a person I would want want to honor um, and I was going to go meet with them, I wouldn't just wear sweatpants and a T-shirt. I would dress up and I would want to show the high value that I feel on the inside for them by getting the things that would bless them, um, but even presenting myself in a way that shows them what's inside of me that values them. Mm -hmm. I guess that's part of it. Yeah, I think that that is really kind of the foundation of it, and it goes back to this thing of uh, when I think about honoring God, it is going back to me clearly understanding who God is and um, all that he has declared himself to be and me accepting it, me receiving it, me believing it, and then in my life, by my life, I conform to the reality of who he is. And that affects all of the other... And that affects how I talk, how I act, how I think, Mm -hmm. all because of a a revelation of who he is. And so in my prayer life many times, uh, and I I think that I I hear believers in using the most closest terms of endearment, intimacy with God, and and I, I, I do as well. So many times you'll hear, hear me call God Papa or Abba. And, and I will uh, describe Jesus as my bridegroom king and use very, very intimate terms. Um, I have been, for a while now, been communicating to Jesus you are my friend that is closer to me than any brother. And, you know, just that sense of, you know, that, that you know, he's my best friend, that he enjoys friendship with us. Mm-hmm. But also, there is this intimacy that is married to honor. It's an intimacy with honor. Intimacy without honor leads to familiarity and disrespect. And so I, in prayer, have been more and more saying, God, 
You are the creator. I acknowledge that I am the created. You made me. So God and I are not on a peer level relationship. Right. He is my maker. And I think that, you know, us going back to foundational truths about the revelation of God's power, His authority, uh, who we are in relationship to Him, but going back to the original intent and the source, uh, we did not make ourselves. And that is a phrase that, quoting Psalm, that I, I often say. But it's this thing of, uh, it's a, it, it is an understanding and a comprehension, really, of who that person is. So, so Jesus, when he taught us to pray, he said, I want you to say, My Father, who art in heaven, holy is your name. Yeah. So another phrase that I, I say in prayer often, Father, we sanctify your name in our hearts. Mm -hmm. We set it apart as that which is unique and different than any other name. So Jesus taught us intimacy. God invites us to call him Father. But then he said, holy is your name. So it's, it's always in every relationship. Can I just say that again? In every relationship, there, there has to, we want intimacy. We want closeness. We want Unity, but unity and intimacy doesn't come out of familiarity. It comes out of an intimacy that is married and coupled with honor. And that is that I understand um, that before this young lady became my wife, she was God's daughter. <laughs> and so... God has reminded me of that, um, that when, when she became, quote unquote, mine. No, she, she has been loaned to me from God for a season, and I'm going to be held account for the stewardship of how I've husbanded her. How did I honor her? Did I cherish her? Did I treasure her? Did I, did I value her? And someday she's going to say, no, you, you worked me hard. Uh, yes, you did. <laughs> Can I add something? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, when you talk about holiness, um, and this is something that I feel like has been, that God's been pressing on. But I don't think just for me, I really feel like this is for our, our church family, is being in a place of, holiness unto the Lord um, in and again we say this I feel like we say this a lot in all of our life our life is not just about um, some parts being unto the Lord and then we live our life it's about our whole lives and this holiness unto the Lord that we are his and then um, several months back we had a speaker come and and we had a situation we were talking about what they even allow themselves to watch. And their phrase wasn't holiness. It was, it was talking about the things that they deal with in prayer and praying for people, that there are things that if someone's watching a TV show and there's like some witchcraft or magic -y kind of thing, they're just like, you have to shut that off because they stand against that and, and help people get delivered from that so much. And I was pondering that and thinking about kind of that thought of being such a guard of what we allow in to our hearts, through our eyes and our ears and just around us because our heart is to be set apart to be holy unto the Lord. And everyone is called to that. But I feel like there's a special thing of if we want to be intimate with the Lord and intimacy with honor, that to go where we haven't gone before, that we have to go with pure heart with pure hands and a clean heart and there's a holiness that we have to um, allow to be worked in us a gift of holiness that we allow it to grow and sometimes that saying no to things that just like everybody it's okay it's not bad but it's not a thing that helps me to be holy so I'm just not going to do that thing or not going to watch that thing or not going to listen to that thing 
because I am altogether different than that and called to be altogether different and set apart unto the Lord. So there has to be a filter or a gate or a, a watchfulness of saying, no, not that, because I want the Lord and I want more yeah. of, of his presence. And not only is it a revelation of who the Lord is, he is high and lifted up and his glory <laughs> fills his temple. And all of the angels say, holy, holy, holy. But with the revelation of the Lord himself comes a revelation of who he's making to me to be in him. And so, Carmen, can you imagine how God looks at us when we uh, pollute ourselves with the things of the world? When he created us to be these image bearers. And, and I wanted to give a shout out to Bethany Henry, who uh, taught a week ago. And she was talking about that uh, in, in kind of referencing Genesis, what Adam and Eve must have been like. And, and it's echoed throughout the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Um, I'm teaching, uh, you know, life in the Word in the book of Hebrews. You know, when it talks about man being made a little lower than the angels, and it says in quoting Psalms 8, David said, What is man that you're mindful of him, or the son of Adam that you would come and visit him? Yet I see that you have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over all the works of your hands. So our call to holiness, our call to living a life that is honoring and reverential is not, uh, it is ultimately about honoring God, but it's honoring how God made us. There have been times where I've seen people take very expensive things and treat it like they bought it at the dollar store. Like something was so uh, valued by someone else and then when it was gifted to them, uh, they, they didn't hold it with any type of sacredness or how that person may have worked for years uh, to, to have something like that. And we see that in inheritance, inheritances, how that sometimes uh, parents will work absolutely for years to achieve something that something is valued because there's been an investment there. And then kids get it and it's gone, it's spent. It's just, um, you know, frivolously it is like the prodigal son who says give me the inheritance and he wasted it all many times when we're watching things that we shouldn't watch listening to things we shouldn't listen to engaging in activities god is looking at you and saying know you not that you are the temple of the holy spirit and i want us to feel that this, this is a dignity and an honor that our Creator God now in the new creation, in bringing new creation realities to us, you hear His voice booming over us saying, don't you understand, don't you know that you are now the temple of the Holy Spirit, the temple of the living God. God Himself has chosen to dwell in in you. And so there has to be an elevation in my understanding of my identity that flows from my understanding of his identity. And then I, I understand that, that I am now defiling. You know, I am, I am polluting. I am destroying the temple of the Holy Spirit by, by allowing that which is familiar in the world uh, to, to just destroy the image that God is attempting to restore. Now, we're going to stop there, and we're going to pick this thing of honor. And so I really felt 
in defining honor, uh, we, we laid a great foundation today because honor comes out of a revelation of who God is and then who He's made us to be unto Him, for Him, for His glory. And so everything that we do as Christians, it is, it is about the glory of God. It's for the glory of His grace that they would see what God has empowered us to become in Christ. And I say, my identity in Jesus is based upon what He's given to me. He's given to me an inheritance. And you know who that inheritance is. Himself. All that He is. In His fullness has been given to me. And He has chosen to release His Spirit to live within us so that we may be brought into union with Him. That we would be filled with the fullness of who He is. That is the way that Jesus is going to receive the, the fullness of you know, the, the thing that he, in how He wants to honor the Father. That it says that God may be all in all. Jesus is determined that the Father has a fullness through Christ in all of His sons and daughters and that the knowledge of His glory fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. And so what we've been given is important. But then what He's in the process of, of making us to be in Christ so He can take us somewhere so that we can be taken somewhere in Christ. What we've been given, what we're being made right now in that unveiling glory to glory process, faith to faith, being transformed into the very image of the Son so that we can stand in His presence for eternity. That's what I want. And the journey doesn't start after I die. I begin to start this journey by faith every day leaning into that grace and that glory that He's made available to me. And so I want to be honoring to God. And then I want to honor that which God honors. That's why this command to honor is, is an essential part of how we love each other. It's because I want to honor that which God honors. Bless you guys. Thank you for uh, joining us. And I'm going to have Carmen pray us out. God. We want your heart of honor. Lord, we want to be like an Esther people that are close and have this intimate relationship with the king, but still honor God. We still want to honor you well. So let this heart be in us. Let the heart of Jesus be in us for you, Father, to honor and to love you rightly. And, and Father, your heart for Jesus, to honor and to love him rightly. Lord, we want to be a people of honor. We want to reflect who you are. We want to be those disciples that are gazing at you and looking at you and becoming like you and, and honoring you and honoring those that you honor. Thank you, God, for your continued faithfulness to us and your work in us and through us and to us. We pray to you be the glory and the honor. Be glorified and honored in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.